ear, listen, receive the word in a proper fashion. The word must be understood and then lodged in our hearts. That's the key. James doesn't say just hear or just do. He says hear and do. As you go down the verses from verse 23 to 25, he explains this with an illustration. He explains this with an illustration. Be careful when we read these verses. He says there are two types, two different kinds of Christians. One is a forgetful hearer, which we see in verse 23 to 24. And then the next type of a Christian is an effectual doer. The first one, a forgetful hearer. James uses this illustration of a person who glances himself into the mirror, sees what he looks like, and then he just shrugs his shoulder probably, and he just walks away, and he does nothing about it, think nothing about it. Similarly, God's spiritual mirror shows us what kind of a person we are. Our most wonderful and gracious Lord. Lord, we come to your presence. As you speak, we hear and do it properly, Lord. You give us the discernment we judge the right and the wrong, good and the bad. Thank you for your presence. As we read and meditate your words, help us to prepare our hearts to receive your words and act accordingly, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, Amen. 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 We have been studying the book of James. We are still in the first chapter. We will continue to read the verses and understand them, what the Spirit says. As we look into today's information, James is focusing on a particular area that we need to focus on. He says that there is a disease among the Christian believers. The disease can be either mild or in an acute condition. He compares this disease to believers to the body of Christ, which we cannot neglect it, right? We are the body of Christ temple of God, because the Spirit lives in us, within us, through us. The disease, he says, it's neutralizing the church, and it is nullifying the testimonies of people. The disease is paralyzing the productive church. So what is the disease and what is the problem James is referring to is between the rupture between confession and deed, the theology and the action. It's between hearing and doing. Most of the believers for us, we accept the word, God's word, but what happens is it fails to move from our head to the heart. 
That's the disease he is mentioning here. Most of the time, God's words get lodged between our hearts and our hands. Most of the Christian believers, we want to enjoy the thrill of to be feeling right in all the ways. But the irony is, we are not willing to endure the inconvenience of being right. To be very simple, that there is a divide or a division or a divorce between the theory or the word what we read and meditate and acquire and how we want to practice it when it comes to our way of life. In the previous messages, what we saw is the overarching information in the book of James is real faith produces genuine works. If you remember that, I think like two messages back, I think like when we started with the James, I mentioned this, real faith produces genuine works. What we saw earl earlier is our perseverance through trials and tribulation, it proves our faith. That's what we saw in the first chapter from verses 1 to 12. And our victory over temptations demonstrates our character. That's what we saw from verse 13 to 18. Now we will be looking into verses 19 to 27 where James says he emphasizes more on the believer's appropriate response to God's word. As I mentioned earlier about this disease, there is a break in the relationship between our belief and how we be behave. What he says in these verses is these two can be reconciled, the belief and the behavior. To study this, we will read from James chapter 1, verses 19 to 27. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks alike. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and the religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless to this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the word. If you look into the verses carefully, the first verse here, looking at verse 19, James addresses, my dear brothers and sisters. The word sentence formed here is, he is addressing the Christian believers. And at the same time, he addresses them by saying, understand this. 
remember. So he is trying to address those people to recollect whatever they have already known. Probably they have forgotten. That's the point here. He says three important things to fertilize the soil of the heart. Listen carefully. Three important things that fertilize the soil of the heart in preparing for receiving and planting the God's word in our hearts. First, he says, you have to be quick to listen. The command he gives here is mere, not mere intentional listening. So you have to listen keenly. At the same time, he says, slow to speak. Before we go to slow to speak, we will look into what he is intentionally saying by quick to listen. Whenever we try to read anything, there are two ways of reading it. Either you read some article or any newspaper, you just like that read, keep on reading it and trying to grasp the information. But when you try to read the Bible, you put some extra effort into it. You just don't read it as it is, but some people do it. That's the point here. You read it with an intention that you grasp the information, what the word does mean. You should have noticed people normally underline the verse, use a highlighter for the verse. This does mean that these people read with an intention to grasp the material, grasp the truth, what the word is saying. That's what here James is mentioning. We have to quick to listen. At the same time, we have to grasp the material what it is into our minds. If you turn to Matthew 13 and verse 14, here, here Jesus is saying, you will be ever hearing but never understanding. You will be ever seeing but never perceiving. And if you go down the verse 20 and 21, he's, he's in the middle of the parable of the sower. In verse 20 and 21, he says, the word, the seed falling on the rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The reason I read these verses from Matthew chapter 13 from Jesus is because this is the background word James is writing the letter with. <clears throat> as we have already looked into, as I told you, when we endure through the trials of life and overcome our temptations to sin, what we saw earlier. And now James is warning us, if we fail to receive the word of God with a ready heart, it will lead to disaster. To receive the word effectively means we have to Slow to speak. That's what he mentions. Put a damper in our tongue. That's what he mentions. The next thing he says is slow to anger. We might ask a question. How does angerness relate to the word of God? How does anger relate in we receiving the word of God? If you... Look into Second Timothy 3.16. It, Paul says, All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, 
or training in righteousness. See, when, the, when we receive God's word, if it is going to be a sinner, that person cannot accept the truth. You should have seen that. Most of the time when we talk to non-believers and when we try to proclaim the word, they immediately respond with an outburst of anger. This is a defensive act by these people because they cannot accept the truth. This is what James is mentioning. We don't want our crookedness to be held up to a perfect standard. For what happens is when there is angerness, this angerness rejects rebuke. But if you look into peace, it accepts the rebuke. Angriness in us, it dismisses correction. But peace, it embraces it. If you look into the next verse, he starts by saying, therefore, therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. First, when he opened this section, he, he said about prepare to receive the truth by opening the ears of the heart. The next thing is zipping up our lips. And the next thing he said is suppressing our urge to strike back. That's the anger. And the next information he says is by doing these, we are ready to receive the truth. Especially in this verse, the important word here is receive, which is in the middle of the verse. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept. If you look into the other versions of the Bible, it says like accept or receive the words. <clears throat> One of the authors he is quoting First Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.6 by saying the Thessalonians, those believers, not only received the word in their tribulations with the joy of the Spirit, but they also received it not as the word of men, but for what is what it is really. The point here is they received the word with eagerness. They received the word with eagerness. If you look into the words in, in 21, it starts with therefore. In the, Tam in, in the Tamil Bible, it is given ahayal. It's, there, therefore, it's a conjunction. The conjunction why James is using is he is resting this command on the previous admonition. That is, you have to be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. Because an anger response to the word does not achieve God's righteousness. We must Therefore, receive the word in a particular way. That's, that's the point here. James describes the conditions that must accompany this reception. What is this? Putting away all the filthiness. Putting aside all that remains of wickedness. And putting on humility. If you watch 
carefully and read carefully verse 21 first he mentions get rid of all the moral filth and the evil and then put on humility the reason why he says is the filthiness in our lives it plugs our hearing if there is filthiness we cannot hear the truth properly and when there is wickedness in us it slows our response to the normal word whatever we are hearing and the third aspect what he says is humility what is the opposite of humility it's pride right but pride is in us it keeps us from exposing our true selves to the light of the world we would have pride in us we will not have any humbleness or humility but such a person cannot accept the word and act accordingly this is the important point he tries to mention he submit everything totally to the word of god whatever he says we abide we listen we do it we are ready to put off everything within our flesh our carnality goes down but we submit everything to our god that's what we read in galatians 2:20 if you remember i think like most of you know this by heart i have been crucified with christ and i no longer live but christ lives in me the life i live in the body i live by the faith in the son of god who i love and he gave himself for me so that's that's the point that's the cross reference i want to give you for this verse as we move on to the next verse 22 do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself do what it says if you carefully wa- listen and watch the words and the verses what james is building from 19 there is a slow progression of preparing and receiving and responding to the truth i told you first the soil of our souls should be prepared which we saw in 19 to 20 and the second one the seed of the truth must be planted which we just now saw in 21 and the third one the anger and the filth and the wickedness must be uprooted but now we have prepared planted what we want and uprooted whatever we didn't want are we now in a situation that god's word is going to bear any fruit in our lives that's the next verses we will be looking into james he begins with a command in verse 22 you see it prove yourself doers of the word and not merely hearers prove yourself doers of the word and not merely hearers as i already told you like the overarching theme of this james book is real faith produces genuine works those who hear without doing they have the guilty feeling of a fake faith but those who hear and do demonstrate do it with authenticity if you watch carefully james doesn't simply tell the readers to be doers he looks into the other side of the thing and says doers and hearers so what are we supposed to do hear listen receive the word in a 
proper fashion the mm-hmm. word must be understood and then lodged in our hearts that's the key james doesn't say just hear or just do he says hear and do as you go down the verses from verse 23 to 25 he explains this with an illustration he explains this with an illustration be careful when we read these verses he says there are two types two different kinds of christians one is a forgetful hearer which we see in verse 23 to 24 and then the next type of a christian is an effectual doer the first one a forgetful hearer james uses this illustration of a person who glances himself into the mirror sees what he looks like and then he just shrugs his shoulder probably and he just walks away and he does nothing about it think nothing about it similarly god's spiritual mirror shows us what kind of a person we are james pictures this person who glances at the scripture looks at the words and he just closes it for everything and just go away this is the forgetful hearer and if you look into verse 25 that's the effectual doer so when i say like effectual doer what is the characteristic feature of this effectual doer he gives careful attention to the scriptures that's what james says the perfect law the law of liberty what he does he thinks deeply he obeys willingly he responds positively he abides by the principle he thinks deeply he obeys willingly and he responds positively and he abides to the principles so instead of hearing and forgetting he hears and he does and what he says is this kind of a person will be blessed in whatever he does if you if you could put this another way a forgetful bearer a forgetful bearer of the word he observes that's what we see in verse 22 to 23 and he goes away and he forgets but an effective doer he looks into intently he perseveres and he acts that's the main emphasis we have to look into these verses going into verses 26 and 27 it says those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on the tongues deceive themselves and the religion is worthless the religion what james mentions here is not our personal convictions or principles what he mentions here is our participation in the worship of the lord that's the religion he is mentioning about what he says is the christianity as a distinct body of believers this is this is important to see here because james says a person who does not control the tongue but who says one thing and does another actually makes the religion worthless 
we have seen most of the people do the same thing here. Do the same thing when we do not control our tongues. We are standing witnesses to the unbelievers. When the unbelievers witness these kind of people, then they would come to a conclusion that these Christians are hypocrites. I think like I, I shared this statement last week or a week before. We are the face of Jesus Christ in this world. The world and the people, they constantly watch us. They watch our character. They watch our conduct. They watch our conversation. So we need to be very, very careful in what we think, in what we talk, and how we conduct ourselves in this heathen world. If we are true believers who have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior and believe in his death and resurrection, we need to act in the way that Jesus Christ did when he was in this world. We cannot read the Bible saying that we are reading the Bible, following the words, then act in the opposite way. Let us be doers by what we hear. This is the major emphasis of this whole verses, whatever we saw. And then finally, he ends up by saying, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Take care of the people who are in need. Jesus Christ came down to serve, not to be served. That's, that's the background information that James is trying to emphasize to give the emphasis to our readers. You try to serve the needed, needy one, visiting orphans and widows. If I could recapitulate everything what we saw in the first chapter, When faith is put to test, it produces genuine stability. To demonstrate this, we first saw the normal trials of life don't crush our genuine faith, but they produce endurance. Verses 1 to 12. And then Overcoming our temptations to sin by relying on God-given strength. That's 13 to 18. And today what we saw now, our genuine faith results in submission to God's word without hypocrisy. Before we end this, I want to give just three just simple points. First thing, don't divorce or separate the truth and your speech. When we speak contrary to the scripture, that's not what we are. We don't give an act. I repeat that we don't give an act of ourselves from 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock in our workplace and then go to Sunday to church and act holy holy. 
Okay? Don't divorce the truth and your speech. Second point, don't divorce or separate the truth and the needs of the others. When there is a person who is in need and we are in a situation when we could help, try to extend your hands. Try to extend your hands. The truth and try to meet to the needs of the others. And the third point here is don't divorce or separate the truth and your upright lifestyle. We do not want to live an immoral life, the other side, with all our filthiness or evilness, and then go back to church on Sunday. These are the three points. And before I end, um, I want to read a material pertaining to this one from Warren Beersby. He says, our values determine our evaluations. If we value our comfort more than character, I read it again. If we value our comfort more than character, then trials will upset us. If we value the material and physical more than the spiritual, we will not be able to count it all joy. That's the very first verse we saw in James chapter 1. Count it all pure joy, brothers and sisters. That's how he starts this James. And finally, Warren Wearsby says, if we live only for the present and forget the future, trials will make us bitter, not better. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful message. Thank you for etching this words in our hearts. Lord, you prepare our hearts in a way that we will receive it in the proper way by removing all our filthiness or wickedness or evil thoughts or evil actions. Remove our pride, Lord. Clothe us with your humility. You have given us your son who had no sin but he died for our sins. Help us always to remember this Lord. Thank you for sending him down. Thank you for that huge sacrifice. We don't deserve this Lord but it is still because of your grace. It is because of your love that you send down him to die for us. You have redeemed us from the dark places and you have put us in the light path. Lord, you know our inadequacies. We fumble, we stumble, but still, Lord, we have the confidence in you that we will not go away from your path on whatever circumstances, whatever trials, whatever tribulations. You have promised that your eyes will always be upon us, guiding us and guarding us and telling us this is the right path. Thank you for your wonderful words, Lord. Help us to receive your words in the proper way. And help us to do the same thing that you expect us, Lord. You mend us, you mold us into the right way. Thank you for all the things you have blessed us with. 
thank you for the eternity you have given us lord help us to share the same with our other people and win more souls to you lord thank you for this wonderful words you have spoken to us bless everyone who's hearing this message and who will be hearing in the future lead them in the right path lord thank you for your presence with us in the name of our lord jesus christ amen amen amen, amen.